Hey everyone, what's bitten here? So this is game seven of the Bretonian campaign. Obviously, my Bretonians uh, against an ogre army. Uh, we decided to play Blood and Glory, so just to just to do something different, uh, as if <laughs> as if this campaign isn't different enough. Uh, so uh, my list, this was my list was created by uh, a fan of the channel uh, who gave it to me on the Bretonian uh, forum. Uh, or at least he gave you most of it, and there was room for tweaking. But basically, it's two units, two units of fifty uh, bowmen with full command, braziers, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, I I put in there the what I call the Malorian horde. So there's actually I think eighty seven um, men at arms, and they've got a couple characters with them, a couple trebuchets behind it, and then one unit of knights. Uh, I have a unit of fast cav, and other than that, that is it, folks. <laughs> That's the list. Um, if you look at my knights, I've got a green knight model in front. He's Bretonian Lord with Virtue of Confidence and Gauntlet of the Duel and the Burst Sword of Carcassonne. So basically, uh, he has to issue challenges. You have to accept of somebody, and then he can reroll hits and wounds, and you have to reroll successful armor saves. Uh, Battle Standard Bear has Virtue of Duty, so it's like basically a plus one combat res, and the unit has a war banner, so they get plus one for BSB, plus one for the Virtue, and plus one for the war banner. His job is to make sure the general doesn't die. I've got a level four Lore of Life in with them. Uh, I've got, I'm sorry, level four lore of heavens. That's what his list stipulated. I don't usually take heavens with with Brett's. Uh, Men at arms has a character in the front left and front right. If you look at the front left, it's the damsel, level two lore of beasts of the prayer icon. So that big horde of men at arms is going to have the same ward save as the knights. And the front right is virtue of empathy. The dude has like um, armor of Argolov or whatever, but it's basically like weapon skill 10. And he has something that gives him initiative 10. Uh, that's the only way he's really protected. So the... Uh, the Oak Army has what you can see up there in the lower left. Uh, what surprised me, I didn't... With the, we were playing a closed list. Uh, he had a, a big unit of man-eaters. I should have known there was something like that, because he really doesn't have much else on the table. And, uh, you know, what he has... Again, if you look up here, he's got, you know, a couple Iron Blasters, small unit of Bulls, small unit of Mord Fangs, small unit of Iron Guts, with a bunch of characters. And the characters, uh, I don't have his list. He's got a Tyrant that, you know, is just built to kill stuff, a Bruiser BSB. He's got a level two butcher there, as well as a fire belly. So ogres obviously go first, so I can get a ward save on my knights. He moves up like that. Um, yeah, not <laughs> not sure what I'm showing there. Uh, shooting phase, yeah, he picks on my um, on my trebuchet on the right. Does three wounds to it, so it doesn't kill it. Still, that still has one guy left. It can still shoot, and he he picks on my knights on the left. And that's actually pretty vulnerable, because I've got a champion and three characters in that unit, which means as of right now, I only have five rank and vile. So if he starts picking on that knight unit, uh, he's going to start clearing off characters. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get that unit in combat. The problem is there's nothing I really want to get in combat, especially because my general needs to be against his characters so I can win that virtue. So uh, that's kind of what I'm worried about right now. Bretonian turn one, uh, put the men at arms up on that scree slope. Uh, there in the middle. Uh, otherwise, I'm just positioning it. I'd rather, rather him not charge me. Uh, reform Bowman on the left. They, they have a musician, so they do it swiftly. And during the magic phase, uh, I get the harmonic convergence so they can reroll one. So I'm hoping the rerolling to ones will help them put some wounds on those man eaters. And Fast Cav are just darting around uh, shooting his saber tusks. So, yeah, the uh, trebuchet fires at something. <laughs> Not sure why I'm showing the picture. Must have fired at something. Uh, men at arms kill exactly one uh, man eater. It looks like a ton of shots, but the problem with this list is this: these 50 men units. Um, I don't. When they volley, I'm still losing a good chunk of shots, and when I reform or move, I don't get those volleys. So I'm only getting. When I reformed, I guess went 14 wide. So I've got 28 shots, which is nothing to sneeze at. But again, they can't hit the broadside of a barn. And then they have to wound. Uh, during the magic phase, I did get the comet off where that die is. So uh, that has the potential to do something for me. And we go to Ogre's turn two. Um, yeah, he actually backed up with this Mornfang. I think he was afraid of the comet going off and really hurting that unit. And it's hard to blame him because that unit, he has kind of this MSU list, right? So uh, it's things like the comet really hurt those small units. Uh, I think he wasn't too worried about it with his character bunker. I think the bulls or iron guts that are there are mainly a character delivery system, so it doesn't matter. Um, his man eaters charge into the bowman. I get a stand and shoot and uh, kill another one. So they're nice and consistent, three wounds each time. 
So he's got three man eaters into 50 Bowman. <laughs> He'll be minus one to hit the first turn. I'm not sure it's going to matter. He's going to just he's going to throw those Bowman around. Yeah, the um, the comet does go off and kills. Uh, I remember it seemed to do a, a fair amount of damage. I don't I don't know. He still has, you know, a lot there. But he lost a couple iron guts. Uh, he shoots at this unit, and yeah, he kills he kills some knights. But now I can't get lookout sir uh, rolls. So now at this point, I pretty much have to charge in somewhere. And the problem is I don't have any way of dealing with his iron blasters. I don't have anything. You know, the trebuchets are too inaccurate. Um, nothing flying that can get to him. So I'm really at their mercy. There's not a whole lot I can do. Uh, over here, he, he picks off the last wound. Uh, off of this one. Uh, luckily, the Virtue of Empathy gives me le eight leadership, and uh, everybody here passes it. And after combat, uh, yeah, uh, he killed a ton. I, I don't know how many bowmen I'm missing there. I'm guessing 12 or 14 or something. Um, but the very consistently picked off yet another man-eater. So, you know, I think, you know, whatever. We're going to get tied up the whole game, or at least for a while, but I think I should win the War of Attrition here. Uh, I'm rerolling once. Yeah, he got the buff where he can um, plus one to wound, but there's no more auto wound, and so it's not really helping him because he's strength five anyway. Patroni turn two. I throw my character bus into his character bus. Uh, I don't want to do that, but then I can't afford not to because now he can just start picking off my characters with his insanely accurate iron blasters. So I have my general, the, the green knight. Uh, I position him such that when I issue a challenge, I'm hoping to take uh, his characters, uh, some of his models out of combat. Uh, to help out a little bit there. I position my, my men at arms so that if he charges me, he does uh, have to take some dangerous terrain uh, test because of the scree slope. And that's not going to do a ton, but at least it'll be something. And if you look on the far right, I'm just moving my bowman up four inches a turn so I can shoot at something. And they're just shooting at that, that bull unit and just not doing anything. Like I said, they can't hit anything and they can't wound anything. So here's this. He's going to move his tyrant up in the middle and then I'm going to shoot a challenge. He has to accept somebody. He's going to accept this tyrant. And so the file on the left is out of combat. So at least it's, it helps some. Uh, I don't care that I'm rerolling to hit and to wound, and he has to reroll uh, armor saves. A Bretonian Lord against an Ogre Tyrant is not a good matchup. Uh, I do get a 5 aboard, uh, but he has a 4 aboard. So, yeah, that's going to be tough. Uh, over here, the the uh, Fast Cav. But I think every turn I, I shoot at his Saber Tusks, I do a wound. So I... Did a second wound, and one saber tusk is down. There's still another saber tusk there. Uh, the trebuchet is able to knock off uh, one of the one of the Mornfang, so better than nothing. And over here, I forgot to reform last time because um, well, I just forgot to do it. But the horde formation isn't doing me any good anymore. And uh, this time, I don't know if I forgot or if I failed it or whatever, but it looks like that. And I did not do three wounds this turn. And after combat, yeah, I do two wounds to his general. Uh, I do two wounds to his champion there on the right. Uh, other than that, uh, I really wasn't able to... I don't think I did a single wound uh, ab above and beyond that. Uh, I think he did... I think he did one wound to my general. There's one wound sitting there. That's either on my general or on my prophetess. I'm just really not sure which. Doesn't matter. I have a lot of combat res because I charge and have the banners and the boar banner and the virtue of duty. And uh, he's stuck. So, yeah, that's going to be rough. Ogre's turn three. He takes his Iron Blaster, slams it to the flank of my general's unit. Uh, otherwise, he just kind of, well, does what, as you can see. Um, yeah, that's just not good. Uh, I've got a wound on my Battle Standard Bear and a wound on, again, I think my general. What's dangerous here is my Battle Standard Bear. He combat res. He's, a, he's an extra banner. He's got the virtue of... of um, of duty. There's two combat res right there. Plus, if he does a wound to him, that's a wound. And he's sitting on one wound. It makes a very tempting target. So, really nervous about that. I need the BSB to stick around. And he doesn't. So, yeah, right there, there's a game, by the way. I mean, one, I didn't win any of the virtues for uh, those two virtues. And two, it's blood and glory. So, th that's the game right there. We decided um, we're going to keep on playing because we spent all the time setting up. You can see he's got three wounds on his tyrant. And, um, yeah, just uh, not quite enough. Couldn't do it. He didn't kill my general, by the way, but he did kill my BSB, and that made all the difference in the world. 
Bretonian turn three. These these men at arms charge over the scree slope. They have to take I have to take a dangerous train test for eighty seven models. <laughs> and you know what? I only lost like a half a dozen. I mean they they did really well. Uh, charge into, slam into the flank of his of his uh, of his his character bus. Ugh, what else am I gonna do, right? I mean. That's my best chance. Uh, these guys in the magic phase, I only have a level two, and everything I'm I'm getting, I'm, I've got curse and I've got the Weissens Wild form. So my priority is Weissens Wild form. If I can get them, you know, strength five, toughness four, they've got a a five six up ward save. Uh, they might be able to do okay. If you look at the bottom left, my bowmen are they picked off another man eater. I finally was able to reform, and it looks like that. So you know, the problem is I have no leadership and no. Um, no reroll. I do have leadership. I'm sorry. Virtue of Empathy is giving me 12 inch leadership. So they do have leadership eight, but no reroll. And even with one man eater, I'm still <laughs> worried I'm going to lose combat. Yeah, so it looks like that. Uh, yeah, my fast calf. His saber test can't get out of my line of sight. I just dance around and shoot at him. Uh, after combat, look at that. The uh, men at arms go in there and just. They don't do a ton of wounds, but they do enough. If you look at his characters, he's got like two wounds on his bruiser, two wounds on his fire belly, still has three wounds on his tyrant. Um, I mean, they just they did a lot of wounds, but just not enough. But they had they charged down a hill. They had three ranks, a banner, a flank. They had all that stuff. Beat him and couldn't run him down. If they'd run him down, that would have really, really, really uh, swung this game. But Alas, they didn't. It looks like that. Um, Ogre turn four. You know, the last round of combat, if you can tell, I did one wound to the man eater, not enough. If you look at the saber tusk on the left, I did one wound to him. My, my fast cap are very consistent, doing one wound per saber tusk per turn. Of course, he rallies his character bus. He's down his battle standard bear, which is kind of nice. Charges into the flank of my men at arms with his Morn Fang. Uh, and my, again, my only concern there is I don't have a reroll. I do have Virtue of Empathy. I'm leadership eight. His bulls charge my damsel who fled. And I think he tried to redirect and failed. And so they're sitting, uh, my, I have a, uh, my Virtue of Empathy dude right in front of him. There's that. I still have the Weiss's Wild Form buff off. So, you know, I'm tough four, so that it's it's nothing to sneeze at. And, um, you know, I've got the ward save. After combat, look, the Maneater's dead. Woohoo! I, I don't know what the point difference is between a unit of 50 bowmen and a unit of six Maneaters. Um... My my guess is the man eaters are they're pretty close. The man eaters might even be more, uh, but we finally won that. Uh, so just reformed him so that if he doesn't charge in with his character bus, I can start shooting at him. Uh, he has I think he still has three rank and file, maybe four. So he's still getting the lookout sir rule. So but if I can just um, you know whittle down that unit, every bit helps. Ogres, oh wait, there's uh, I think that's after combat. So the Mornfang come in, kill a bunch. I'm steadfast, I don't break. Um, I think I tried to reform and couldn't. Uh, after combat here, um, yeah, this is just, there's no movement on my part. I mean, what's there to do? I'm shooting at his iron guts. I think I killed a dude. Um, you know, I'm doing a couple wounds to the Mornfang. I just don't have enough attacks, so I reform. And I'm like, if you want to bring in your character bus, that's fine. I'm still going to be steadfast. I'm either going to stick or not, and um, I think if I form to face the Mornfang, I have a much better chance of polishing them off. Again, I've, I'm strength five. So in Ogres, he does not want to charge in with his character bus, because he, he's just worried that I'm going to stick around, f polish off his Mornfang, turn and face his characters. And again, I only have to do like one one wound to his characters, and they start dying. I think his, his Butcher uh, regrew a couple wounds, so I think he's at full strength, but his Tyrant only has two left, and even though he's got a decent armor and ward save... It's a lot of attacks going at him. Uh, his bulls come into the flank of my uh, bowmen. Now, my other unit of 50 bowmen has been shooting at these bulls every turn, all game long. And I've done, you know, a total of, what, seven wounds to them? Just freaking pointless. Yeah, there's that. That is not where you want to be if you're a Bretonian bowman. Uh, he's whittling my unit down, kind of. He's done a lot of wounds to me, but I have so many guys there. <laughs> yeah. So he's got Troll Guts off, a regen save, so that's really saving him there. Um, yeah, after combat, we're still sticking around with the Morn Fang. My bowmen are gone. We go to... Oh, wait, I take that back. After combat, um, the last picture was after the bowmen combat. This is after the Morn Fang combat. Uh, yeah, I killed him. He had one guy left, 
uh, he broke from combat I did not pursue because it was a banner and he was going to die anyway. So I just reformed to face his character bus, and I'm saying, bring it on, let's see what happens. And he says no, he stays there with his character bus, he moves his lone remaining saber tusk uh, right in my way. This one started off on the far right side of the table and has been working its way around. I never shot at him because I was trying to get the, I was trying to get the, uh, the bulls taken care of. So he knows he has more points, so he's just trying to make sure nothing weird happens. Then he punks my, my Virtue of Empathy dude with a cannon. So kills him. My men-at-arms fail their panic test. <laughs> they run away. And at that point, that's the game. I rally on my turn, but what does it matter? Uh, game was over a long time ago, uh, but either way, I, got, I score no Virtues for the Bretonian campaign and score up a loss uh, anyway with the Bretonians. Ended up, I actually thought it was, ended up being a kind of a fun game. What I don't like about I mean, it was a fun list to play once. I wouldn't, I wouldn't play it again. Um, what I don't like about it is the Bowman, I, I have a lot of points that can't shoot because there's just too many models in the unit. Uh, and so the volley fire is cutting out just a chunk of them. Um, there, it's too many. So if I want to, if I want to take care of a saber tusk, I either have to ignore it or use or waste a whole unit of 50 shooting at it. So that's why I'd rather have units of 10 if I want a heavy shooting army. Um, you know, they prove useful against the man eaters. Um, but that's really about all I can say for it. Now, the big bus of men at arms, I don't know. I'm really kind of liking that. Um, I, th I think it's actually pretty effective. It's just so many bodies, as long as they have leadership around and you get that license buff on them and you get the prayer icon on them, you know, if people bring strength five or better against them, I'm getting a five aboard save and that really makes a difference. So kind of like, kind of liking that. I think that was a, a nice devious little build by Malorian there. But anyway, that's game seven of the uh, Bretonian Challenge. No Virtues won this game, so I'm at six Virtues after seven games. Hope you enjoyed it.